to our book club series of The Primal Wound. We are on chapter 13, which I cannot believe. No. Like, my book won't even stay open because we're almost <laughs> at the end here, so that's super exciting. Um, but yeah, welcome back. Yes, welcome back to our book club. We are just going to start by, I guess, just going through the chapter section by section, um, seeing which ones stick out to us. We won't probably go over every single thing, but let's, I guess, dive in. Um, this particular chapter is called The Reunion Process. And I believe we both on that first section uh, titled Understanding the Emotional Climate of Reunions. We both had a couple notes in there, but basically with this particular chapter being about reunion, kind of want to give you the floor if you want to kind of talk <laughs> about things and we can kind of discuss yeah. from there since you have that experience. Definitely. So like on the first page, like this whole book club series. <laughs> the we first page something. is always something crazy. The very first sentence is reunion. Oh my gosh. No, no, no. Reunions <laughs> are very emotional. And that is so true. Like they, I don't think she went into it and I'll kind of go over my notes at the end here, but like, I don't think she went into it in depth on how emotional it is for the adoptee and how mm. life changing it is also like, it's very, very emotional. Um, in here, it just talks about mostly, the birth mother, um, talking about the reunion, if they had like a perfect reunion, um, a wonderful relationship, they've had others where they cry and, you know, the child doesn't care, even phones or rights. And I know that gets deeper into it in here. So I think I'll talk about it more in a different section that I underlined, but jumping into that one, understanding the emotional climate, um, for me, it was just... Kind of right off the bat, I kind of came up with our one main question for the discussion, um, which is on page 168. Mm -hmm. So there was a quote in here from a woman stating, mm. if she left me once when I was a tiny baby, she can leave me again. So my question off of that is, I'll ask you um, and then give my opinion. So since you haven't searched, are you afraid of that reunion process because of this fear? I mean, based on where I'm at now, I think I can obviously more firmly answer that question mm -hmm. versus what maybe I would have said before. Before it would have been like, I don't know, it's a possibility. I guess that scares me. Whereas now it's kind of like I read it and I'm not like, oh my God, this is why. You know what I mean? It's just like, I read this and I'm like, okay, I get why this is a valid fear for mm -hmm. people. It's definitely not something that I have, I guess, thought about. I don't know. The whole, like, thought about reunion for me is so, I guess, for lack of a better term, impersonal, where I'm just kind of, like, so meh about it. Yeah. So, I guess I don't really get much emotional pull from that. Although, for, for sure. you, when you started this, is that something that you thought about a lot? No. And so, that's what made me Interesting. stick really? that out. Yeah. I was huh. just like, I'm just going to do a search. Have an answer for that, no. honestly. So, like, I want to hear if people have done the reunion process or not, what your answer is or experience was. But um, for people who have searched, are you afraid she'll leave hmm. again was kind of the second part of that question. And for me, it was no. Like, if she leaves again, I don't know. Like, I guess I didn't have that happen. So maybe if it happened, I'd feel different. But since it hasn't happened, knock on wood, um, I feel okay about it. <laughs> Sorry, Tevin just knocked on wood from the other room. Thank you for Thank that. Thank you. Thank you, Tevin. <laughs> wow. All right. Um, but yeah, I, I thought I'd feel different about it. And I actually really never even thought about that. I was just like going in full force at 18. Like, I need to find her. It is what it is. What happens, what happens, you know? Yeah. That's really interesting because I was yeah. wondering, like, I mean, again, through most of this uh, chapter, I was mm -hmm. just like thinking, like, oh, I wonder if this resonates with Erica. Um, I have more on the next page. I'll probably just dive in because you Please probably don't have too much. There's only one thing that I have. At the bottom of at 169? The, yeah. Okay. At the very end of it. So, so take it away. So mine's at the top there. It's like um, we're talking about how also the birth mother is terrified she'll sure. lose her child again. And it made me kind of sit back and question, like, I wonder how my birth mom feels because a lot of times I'll go months without talking to her. Yeah. And it's not because I don't want to talk to her. It's just like. It's just a different connection. It's like when you don't talk to your friends for a couple months and then you reconnect. It's like, oh, we picked up right where we left off. It's not anything like that or shameful in my side. But for her, it might be, like, shameful. And she might feel bad about it. And mm -hmm. I just want to know the truth. And so I think a lot of the conversations we've had is, 
more me asking a ton of questions and her always saying sorry, always saying sorry. It's like, oh, interesting. Yeah. And it's like, I don't care. You know, like, okay, maybe I care, but like, I don't care. You don't hold a grudge. Right. It sounds like. Yeah. And I just, I just want to know the truth. You know, like if it was some a bad situation, like I want to be able to be that support for her. If it was a great situation, I want to be that support for her. I just want to be there, know the truth, and give her that support because she's been without it her whole life too. Sure. And so I think that's where that really stuck out to me. And I just wish I knew exactly what it felt like for her. Um, I think she'll tell me something to make me feel good, you mm-hmm. know, like so she won't lose me again. But whatever she would tell me. I just wish it was the truth. And I don't know if it's the truth or not, honestly. For sure. And that's what's weird about reunions. You get all these different pieces of information, but yet you're still kind of on the unknown. For sure. Well, I think for me in that, like basically with what you've gone over and I don't know, I guess we didn't really talk about this ahead of time, but I feel like this chapter we can talk about it in a different way and jump around a little bit because I think we also both had very similar feelings at the end of it. Yes. Uh, Kind of just going to how this whole chapter made us feel um well i guess if you want to share yours first because i do agree with you and when i read yours i was like that's why this didn't stick the landing for me yeah so i guess we'll jump down to that how does make us feel um as we go through it i think you'll also understand why it might even be a shorter episode just because of mm, that yeah. understanding and how like the adoptee side i didn't feel this at all and it really made me um Take a step back and realize, like, this is an adoptive mom's perspective who mm-hmm. was writing the book. Nancy has no idea what it's like for an adoptee going through this reunion process. She talks a lot about the adoptive mother and how that would feel and how the birth mom and the adoptive mom would connect and try yeah, to talk that about weird. that. Yeah, and, like, I don't know. I didn't really think about that either, which is, like, a great way to put it and think about the triad. But for me as an adoptee, I feel like, She lacked in this section so many resources and guidance for the adoptees as this is such a life-changing experience. Mm. I think there was a lot missed on the reunion process, personally. Like, and of course she wouldn't fully understand what that means, but Yeah. I don't know. For me, pointing out the last paragraph of that section on page 169, Mm -hmm. I just felt like that the way she was talking. Like I just kind of underlined and said BS because I was like, this really feels like the whole chapter felt like she was saying so much and yet saying so little. Right. Where it was just like, yes. I don't even know. It just really bothered me. Like she, in this particular um, paragraph, you know, talking about how there are a lot of emotions. Yes, that is true. Thinking, you know, feelings need to be validated. But then the way that she's just like, this is how it needs to be done. Then this can happen. And then this can happen. And this can happen. Mm-hmm. I'm like, it's not a step-by-step thing. This is a very like. Right. I don't know, hypothetical and I don't know, just a perspective. It's not a guide to how to do this. That just kind of bothered mm-hmm. me. And after I read your comment, I was like, yeah, I guess that's why I kind of feel. And like you said, this is, I think, sticking out more as being like the adoptive mother mm-hmm. and kind of to just also point out when you had mentioned like the part that I read about like the, um, I guess, jumping ahead to well i guess it's the regression section there is a mention of oh wait never mind it's not that part the one where you mentioned where the adoptive mother and the birth mother are going to connect yeah, i'm like yeah. is that happening i'd really like to know if that's happened to anybody I because kind of that's a note on here too and i think that's even far like this chapter is long for no reason with like yeah, just, what, so just what you said like it's, it's saying, saying a lot, lot without, without actually saying anything exactly and granted, there are sections here that we couldn't really connect with as far as, like, an element that I don't understand, genetic mm-hmm. sexual attraction, which I've only heard of because of this book, mm-hmm. incest taboo, and sexual feelings between biological siblings. And the only thing that I'm wondering about these is, was that discussed with you as, a, like, when you were preparing? No. So they don't even talk about that. No. Which, like, the way that they... And like, to and me, I can't it's tell like, if that's, that's family. Ugh. Like, that's... yeah, but at the same time, the way that they talk about it in the biological sense, like, yes. I was kind of like, oh, that's what, because I've only heard of it yes. very vaguely. I've never actually heard it like described in this like psychological way. Mm-hmm. So part of that, like, ugh, I don't know, it's kind of like, right, it puts them together as far as the two plus two equals four, as far as it being 
makes sense. But yes. at the same time, I just wonder. I'm kind of, su- well, I don't know if I'm surprised or happy that they didn't go over that with you. But at the same <laughs> time, it's like, I feel like I've seen comments like this mm-hmm. in the support groups on Facebook where it's like, oh, my God, like, this is a thing. Yeah. And, no, that's... and, like, I know it happens, even, like, with your adoptive family having, like, creepy uncles or, <sighs> yeah. like, just situations like that where it makes the adoptee feel uncomfortable. And, like, I know that happens often because people look at you as, oh, you're not part of the family. But personally, related, yeah, yeah. But... personally, I'm just like, no, that didn't happen. The only, like thing like if they want to kind of talk about it in here is just when I hugged my birth mom I had that connection Mm. but that's nothing sexual well yeah and that's kind of like that's a little bit what they were touching on but a lot more extreme and extreme it was just interesting that it was linked to so much so much that was like primal and I was like ah what is Mm -hmm. uh?" but at the same time it's like it should be something that people can feel comfortable talking to a professional about yes um And I guess, given the fact that it's written here, it clearly happens. For sure. Kind of blew my mind, but... You know, it's just probably how everything is kind of with adoption. It's confusing. Yeah. And if you're not really open about it or talking about it, I can see how you get things tied differently, but... Yeah. Or if you didn't ever know you were adopted. I don't know. There's a lot of different aspects there, too. But yeah, I didn't have anything personally through those ones. And they never... I'm just kind of... Yeah. Yeah, Again, I don't know how I feel about the fact that they never talked about it, but whatever. (laughs) Oh, let's see. So going, we kind of skipped through a a bit there, just because a lot of that was that sexual part. Um, Reunions and reconciliation is kind of where the next part where I had Mm -hmm. quite a bit, or that hard to reach adopted, those next two sections on 175 and 176. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, for me on those with the reunions as reconciliation, mm -hmm. um... One quote I thought was interesting on 175, because of the emotionally charged climate in which these reunions take place, it is often difficult for anyone to respond responsibly to what's going on. And I thought that was really interesting, just because, like, a lot of the rest of it was just talking about how to communicate with stuff. And I was just like, I mean, you know, I guess that makes sense. It's just like, it is confusing, but it does, I don't know, it really picks this whole thing apart, which was kind of overwhelming. Definitely. And I guess that that explains it well and kind of what I outlined on that one, too. Um, just the confusion and vulnerability mm-hmm. between the birth mother, the child, all of that. Kind of how to define their new relationship is very difficult to navigate because I've had some people who were in, you know, the reunion process when I was who either their mom, you know, didn't want them or didn't want the contact, things like that. Some who lived with their birth mom right after that because they mm-hmm. felt so connected. Mm-hmm. Some who just had that basic conversations like myself. And it's just, there's so many different aspects of this. And I feel like they didn't touch on those different aspects, which I thought they would. Yeah. Being about adoption, that's like a main part of it. But yeah, you'd kind of touch great on that one. And I think just going into the next one, the hard, hard to, to reach, reach adopting. Yeah. That at the bottom there is where it talks about the yeah. adoptive mother who has suffered years of frustration and bonding process with her adopted child can give comfort to what the birth mother is experiencing. Because because now, like, I guess what they're saying is like the birth mother is now experiencing that hard bonding with that child that she saw as a baby, now as a grown adult. Mm-hmm. Like I couldn't imagine how that would be either. I mean, I feel it on my side personally of You've, you've lost all of these years. You don't get any of those back. I've talked about that in depth um, mm-hmm. on different episodes, but she also had felt that. So I think that jumps into our second question here then that I had. Um, just for adoptive parents, what was the process like for you seeing your adopted child go through this reunion process? Mm-hmm. I know my parents touched base on it a little bit when we went back on that episode Um It was last season already, gosh. The Meeting with the Orange Chairs, episode 18. They talked about kind of what that was like for them. It was sad, but great. Um, They were supportive, but I know it was hard for all aspects of it. And so I would love to hear other adoptive parents' perspectives on that and how you helped your child in that process. Was it hard for you connecting with the birth mom? What was it like for you? That would be really interesting. I'd also want to know if there are... And maybe this is probably more likely in a domestic situation versus international. 
where if there is an adoptive mother that's connected with the birth mother in this reunion process, like that yeah. sounds, I was shocked to read that. I was like, that's an interesting suggestion. Mm -hmm. Partially just because I think about a language barrier. Yep. That's just where my mind goes because that's where we're from. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I'd be curious to know if anybody's had that experience. That just was really surprising to read. Absolutely. And I personally don't know that that would necessarily be doable. Like, I feel like there would be a lot of defensiveness there mm, without, mm -hmm. and granted the whole chapter is about being like emotionally responsible and communicative and all these kinds of things. And, but at the same time, it's like, okay, if all those, all those things are done perfectly, yeah, maybe they can have support each other and have that conversation. But that's, I don't know. I think it's more challenging than that. That seemed like a very, like, these two can support each other. It's like, ooh, I can agree. they know? Like, yeah. And is it, that realistic? It's funny you bring that up because very on the next page on 178, <sighs> it talks about how Nancy's talking to these birth mothers in this book, essentially. Like, I urge birth mothers reading this book to can reconsider the, like, any reason, pretty much, for not wanting to have that relationship with their child. I'm just like, yeah. ooh. I didn't That's like that different either. because everyone has like a different perspective on this whole adoption. Every adoption and process is so different for everyone in the triad: birth mom, adopted parents. Like, yeah, I did. I just felt and like I that feel wasn't like it right. Just, it put a lot of like responsibility back on the birth mother, which, as we kind of talked about, with the ways in which society has put like thrust this upon mm -hmm. the birth mother, based on circumstances outside of her control. Yeah. When they say at the top of 178, uh, when you say, I urge any birth mother reading this book to reconsider if she is declined or disinclined for any reason to allow some kind of relationship with the child she, she surrendered. He needs this connection to feel whole, and so does she. Mm -hmm. I knew you'd have a feeling on that one. I'm insulted. <laughs> no, I'm not. But, but it's just kind of like, it feels you like it kind of that. negates the rest of this book. Yes. Like, it's all of this right here about healing it. And it's like, oh, this is the only solution. Mm -hmm. Drat. Burn the rest of it. This is the only chapter we need. And yes. I'm just like, um, okay. Like, and I think it's also just, it just, dis it discredits these choices. Yeah. That the birth mother has made. Yeah. I, I think a lot of birth mothers don't have any other choice. I agree. And I think it's stupid and I feel for like us it's to like. Wrong for an adopted mother who hasn't, first of all, mm, gone through that that's process. That's a good point. That's a good point. And maybe, like, your child had a bad situation and, like, you know, reconsider. But you also got to think, if someone tried to, like, say, hey, you're my birth mom, when you have a whole other family, a whole other situation that no one knows about you, you're kind of a secret, that would be difficult to navigate regardless. There would be a lot of hesitation, even if I was in that situation, mm -hmm. to be like, you know what? Yeah, let me just start this relationship with you now. Like whoa, take a step back there. Yeah, I just felt like it was not her place. Yeah, that's a really good way to put it. It's really not her place. And it just mm -hmm. felt like such a simple, like these two sentences were supposed to just be like, oh, well, maybe this, this you know, it's like <laughs> these aren't, this isn't the type of topic where you can be given these types of suggestions. Right. And it, I don't know. I'm just like, okay, Nancy. <laughs> like, Mm, no, nope. I had different feelings about Nancy on this chapter. Mm, yep, it didn't really. The again. other ones I felt so aha uh -huh, validated, like you Which got was that. Mostly, I feel like in previous chapters she came at it from the the side of a psychi or a psychologist. Yes. Versus in this case, it's like I really again just like she was saying so much without saying anything yes, at all. Yeah. And it was just a lot of rambling. So. And like um, we're almost at the back. I know, that's the thing. We're... That's kind of where I guess, you know, like we we can talk if we really connected on something, but even with me going through the reunion process, I felt a disconnect in this. Mm -hmm. The only other thing I guess I would say is that last uh section on 178 or excuse me, 179, 180 is pretty much that oh, yeah. reunions can indeed be a vital part of healing process for all sides of the adoption triad. And I definitely agree with that. I think that was my main reason for coming out of the fog or starting that journey of coming out of the fog and just feeling that love and support from both sides of my family. Um, but it's difficult. And I just, I want to emphasize on that a lot more. It's so life-changing. It's so difficult. She didn't touch base on that. Didn't get any, mm. give any resources or, um, you know, just like descriptive pain that would you would go through going through that process or leading up to that process. So I think that was lacked. But in the end, I think 
the very the only thing that I was just like, yes, Nancy, you got that right, is reunions are very emotional, and that was the very first sentence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Erica's just <laughs> ripping to Nancy to shreds, but I like no it. offense to her; she's the, a great lady, probably. But like this part, just <laughs> she never emails us. Yeah, I right. just I could have written this a little bit better. Well, and I think it's a lot of just talking about like this is how you should feel, not this is what you should do. And I think there could be more actions in place as far as suggesting uh, getting professional help from these yes, people, like that situations. was huge for me before I went. And you said journaling, I think journaling also. things like that that I'm like okay, mm-hmm. writing your questions this down might... ahead of time because when you get there you freeze. Like I blacked yeah. out. I don't know what happened. What do you mean there could very well be a resource that's a little bit different than this? That's not just like the psychology <laughs> yeah. behind things, yeah. but it's like. I can imagine someone reading all of this and then getting to this chapter and actually needing that kind of resolution because they're actually doing something. Whereas everything else is kind of based on your time and based on your progress emotionally. Mm -hmm. This is an actual action piece that revolves around time. Yeah. I think, which sounds so whatever. I don't know. But the rest of it feels so just, you know, this is what's happened. This is what's happening. This is how you're feeling. Whereas this, I can imagine someone reading this and be like, okay, so do I do? Yeah. I still like, don't know. I almost do. wouldn't want to go through the reading process after reading that. Mm, that's like, I wouldn't point. feel like, oh, this is going to help me heal. This is going to help yeah. me, whatever. It's like, hmm. The only question, other question that I had for you mm-hmm. was in the last section, tenacity, patience, and understanding in the reunion process. They basically are saying like, no one can be left out because each part has been part of the process or each of the triad has been part of the process. Do you think that the adoptive parent should be as involved equally as the birth mother and the child? No, I think that is different. Um, even when I was in Colombia, like I had a time alone with my birth mom my adoptive parents weren't with me the entire time like they gave me that space to you know just understand this new relationship rekindle that Mm -hmm. relationship that i guess i've felt but never understood whatever the case may be i think it's very different and i think as sad as it sounds like the adoptive parents are kind of on the back burner for this Mm -hmm. and and that's where my guilt came in. I, of course, didn't want them to feel that way, like they aren't as loved or I don't love them as much or appreciate them as much. It's just a different relationship. And yeah. I think that's, it's very different for all aspects. But I do think the adoptive parents are going to be a little out of less. Little, yeah. yeah. Which I don't personally, like, it's not a bad thing. It's no. just how it is. Yeah. Like, this is just a new relationship. And for me, I think it would be very difficult if, you know, your child... Your yeah. adopted child actually went to live with that oh, your birth sure. family. Like, I mean, I that would that be, a, would be huge a huge shift. Yes, yes. And obviously, that's something with us being international is pretty uncommon. I suppose not impossible, but no, it's it happened uncommon. to someone who we were yeah in we there know. with. Yeah, yeah. So, so it happens, and I think that's very difficult for the adoptive parents. And but that's what this kid thought his journey was, mm-hmm. and you have to explore that. And I think if you're going to adopt, you're going to have to let them step out of those boundaries that you kind of created to make it, you know, an okay, safe spot where they come back to you for that comfort and Mm -hmm. guidance. But if they want to go on this other journey that you didn't see coming, you kind of got to let them do what they need to do. They're mostly generally going to be adults at this point anyway. So that has an impact of it as far as people making their choices. Mm -hmm. So I just thought that was interesting because I was like, okay, Nancy. (laughs) All right, we get it. (laughs) So that was just kind of like one final thought that I wanted to bring to the table, but definitely. Yeah. That was chapter 13 and I I guess I'm a little discouraged and I know you were (laughs) a little bit too. So hopefully the rest of you, I don't know what people's feelings are going to be on this, if they're going to agree with us or they had more connections on this. Um, And it's very possible because again, first of all, every adoption story is different and every reunion process is completely different. And we'd, love to hear back from you and yeah. those discussion questions because that really helps us understand different perspectives um then we can maybe talk about that or look at it in a different view that we've never really experienced or thought about before so we love when you guys kind of participate in those because it helps us understand adoption as a whole too yeah because we have our experience and that's what we are speaking off of and that said, obviously, with the communications with us on social media, we do get a lot more private messages versus yes. comments, which totally fine. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we understand that this is a really sensitive 
thing to talk about. Um, so please continue to do so. We are obviously there for any support or questions or anything like that. And as you're kind of going through these processes, you know, it's obviously a challenge. Um, hopefully reading through this with us has been, which considering we're getting close to the end, we'll be talking a little bit more about that. Um, we did just post a bonus episode recently. So that was February 9th. Was that yesterday? <laughs> yeah, I, I think know. so. I'm, calendar's confusing. We talked about that in the episode. We, <sighs> we talked about it in the episode. Yeah, we're like, what, what day, day is it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we talked about just the fact that, you know, the reading this has taken about a year. And I don't know that anybody really would or should want to do it faster. Mm -hmm. It's a lot to digest. So we definitely encourage you guys to take your time. Hopefully these discussions have been helpful and hopefully and you guys know that you have that support from us. For sure. And I see a lot of comments too, like I'm too scared or it's too much to start reading that. We felt yeah. the same way. Take it a chapter a at a time, a chapter a month even. Chapter exactly. every two months. Yeah. Like take time. That's why it's taken us so long. We kind of, again, touched on that in that short episode, but we understand it, but I think it'll help you heal. It'll help you feel some type of validation in I think it grounds one you a part bit too. of this book, at least. Yeah. I think you'll connect with, and we'll be here to connect with you, too. All right. Well, we will be uh, returning then for the last few chapters. So coming up yes. next will be chapter 14, and then finishing off the book in a couple of weeks. So thank you guys all for listening. Until next time. Later. Bye. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh yeah. Give me a hammer. Our headphones are so bad. Should we do like this? Like, people like in our. Well, what should I do? I don't know. Like, don't we just go in? Yeah, you do like it. <laughs> what should I? Well, I was following your lead. Tell me, show me, show me where. I don't know. Like, what's normal about like just like? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> Guide me. Maybe this way's better.